Dunedin. Described as an endearing city of fine, unspoiled Edwardian and Victorian architecture, an acknowledged home for learning, heritage, arts and culture in New Zealand. But to gravel rally buffs, it's important for another reason. If Dunedin is considered one of the world's great small cities, then it's host to one of the great gravel rallies of the world. Welcome to the Stadium Cars International Classic Rally of Otago. Over the past couple of decades, it's attracted some global rally sensations. Jimmy McRae, Didier Oriel, Stig Bloomfist, Yuha Kankinen and Michel Mouton to name a few. This year, the Classic has attracted another couple of high profile names. Former British rally champion Alistair McRae returns, as does NZ's own WRC hero Hayden Patton. They join a regular handful of top-notch classic competitors. But this story is not just about the front runners. There are a raft of drivers and cars in the 2015 Classic, all with their own tale to tell. Local rally driver Mark Lawton swapped his driving gloves for a microphone to bring you some of their stories. Alistair McRae, we're at the start of the Otago Rally in the Octagon. You were here a few years ago, but you come back this year with your own car. Tell us about it. Yeah, I was here in 2009, uh, and we were leading the rally when the engine went, and then the organisers and the needing the kind of put a deal together, got me down with my own car, which uh, has only done one event. Uh, it's a Group Four Escort, and you know, really looking forward to the events. Fantastic roads, a great event, and just looking forward to getting out there. You know, obviously Hayden's uh, doing a lot of mileage at the moment. He's going very well in the in the WRC. He's shown some great speed, but there's also a lot of other New Zealand drivers that will go quick as well. So I think tomorrow morning it's quite a long stage to start. Uh, we'll see if we can get a good rhythm going and and push as hard as we as we feel we can. Hayden Pedden, we'll just interrupt you while you're signing some posters here. Great to have you at the Otago Rally. You're on a World Rally program. What makes you come to Otago or want to come to Otago? Uh, for me, it's one of the most enjoyable rallies in the world and some of the best roads as well. And I guess it's the closest I get to home as well. And to come and drive a BDA is, uh, is a lot of pleasure. So really looking forward to this weekend. So you talk about driving a BDA quite different from what you drive in your everyday job. Um, what sort of things do you have to think about when you jump into a BDA? Uh, yeah. It probably couldn't be more contrasting to be honest, but uh, you know I think when you come back to a classic car, it seems like it's in slow motion to what we're used to. But it's almost a bit like a jet boat as well. You got You got to steer it on the throttle. So lots of sideways, looking out the side windows, and uh, you know it's a, the way rallying should be. Derek, um, you're what we call our local hope this year. Um, have you got a game plan? Yeah, I think I said in the paper to brake later and accelerate earlier. And uh, so you're going to stick to that? We'll be watching tomorrow, you realise? Oh, I'm going to try my best, Lordy, but um, look, it's a great event, really enjoy it. Um, some good competition this year, and um, you know, if we put a new engine in the car and gearbox, so I'm really looking forward to giving it a good thrashing. Marcus Van Klink, you're the first non-Ford Escort on the road. What's, going, what's in store for you this weekend? Oh, I think we'll give it a good crack, I reckon. Uh, it's the best looking car, obviously, so... Uh, yeah, no, we'll see how stage one and two go, and then we'll play it. Well, yeah, it's a long rally, and, um, you know, history goes through. You've got to be there on the last day, so the plan will be to be there or thereabouts. So there we go. The car's about to get underway as they go over the start ramp behind me very shortly. But, of course, tomorrow's where it all starts when they get out on the gravel. Good morning girls. Good morning, Deborah and Heather. Now you guys are the only all girl team in the classic rally and you've got an iconic car here. Tell us about the car. Um, it's a it's a wee two litre turbo uh, Starion motor in it. Uh, we've got a, a nice wee dog box now and um, it's, it's really set up nicely at the moment. You're seated in the top ten. Do you have a plan for today? I guess you really got to start off quite fast otherwise you get left behind. Um, we'll just keep it on those grippy lines and laugh and giggle like we normally do. <laughs> Heather, you sort of keep everything together in the passenger seat, don't you? Yeah, I try and tell her where to go. It's the only time she listens to me, so... <laughs> it's cool what is, what we, what's written down, and we've been through on recce and checked our notes, so they're looking good. Oh, that's the girls. Ten straight years in the Otago Classic Rally, and Peter, you're a great campaigner. You've got the trusty Toyota Starlet here. In for a good day? 
Well, I hope so, yeah. It's, it's been good to us every other year, so I don't see why it should be any different. And I think it's fantastic. Husband and wife rallying. Take the wife out there. Does she tell you where to go? Oh, always, but, you know, it's great when both get involved because it's quite a selfish sport if only the husband's doing it. I think when you're both involved, you, she realises the costs are involved and she, she never queries when I need some money to repeat on the car. She, there's no hesitation to just get spent. And obviously a lot of trust in the relationship. Cherie, you enjoy sitting in the passenger seat? Absolutely. Yeah, it's a pleasure to sit beside him. It's the only time he does listen to me. Departing the Scenic Circle Hotel, special stage one is 70 kilometres to the north of Dunedin. But Jeff Judd never makes it. Jeff, we're heading out to the first stage. Here you are on the side of the road. I thought the distributor cap was just slightly skew off coming mm -hmm. out of Hampton. And, and then Smithy found some plug leads he didn't think were right, so I don't know. We got it going right for 800 metres and now it's gone flat again, so... How many stages have you done? <laughs> Zero, thank you. stages of the day and um, clearly there's been a lot of commitment from the drivers but have a look at the sort of commitment these spectators are putting in. The road's nearly blocked out here and there's lots and lots of spectators, plenty of commitment to get to actually see the cars. drama this morning in the first four stages. Derek Ayson with a blown engine just nine kilometres into the first stage. Yeah, no problems at all with the car. Uh, you know, just had a, you know, near the end of the long one there. First we caught the car in front and then uh, just an uphill hairpin, got a bit sideways and naturally coming from four-wheel drive, I thought I'll oh, just keep it pinned and it'll come out, but no, just keep going around. Seven, Andy Martin. You've been following a bit close. Yeah, unfortunately, in that stage, we uh, caught up to the car in front of us and uh, one of our Aussie brothers, and uh, he couldn't see us behind him clearly, uh, wouldn't pull over. So um, when he dropped the clutch, it smashed the windscreen, and uh, he pulled over about 100 metres up the road, and we kept going without a windscreen. So it's pretty unfortunate. So you got the crew working furiously there. You'll be right to get out to stage five? Yeah, we've got a spare window there, so um, other than this, the car's going really well and uh, we're enjoying the rally so far. Pretty special car you've got here. It's a V8. Yeah, um, it's a five-litre V8 and an old 74 Capri. Um, we usually have a few V8s, but this year I'm the only one. And you've got young Nikita in the passenger seat again. I think this is her third year. And uh, I see she's going through pace notes there. Tell us about that. Um, yeah, it's her second year on notes and third time she's done the rally, so she did it blind the first time and then we started teaching her notes at a few hill climbs and rally sprints and did notes last year and she's done an amazingly good job. So Craig, from Belclutha, normally a co-driver in the Otago rally, is this your first Otago rally as a driver? Yes, this is my first first go as a driver. You've got young Daniel Mills in the uh, passenger seat. His father's pretty well known around these parts. Is this his first go co-driving? Uh, no, we've, this is his fourth go at co-driving for me. We've done three Catlins rallies, and but this is his first time with the Targo rally and first time on notes. Well, he hasn't got you lost yet today? He, only once. He's got me lost on the touring stage. So there's a couple of words said, but hey, he's only young and we're all learning and um, you know, it's just all part of the game. One of the interesting things about the Otago Rally is not only all the New Zealanders that do it, but there's a whole lot of Australians that come over every year. It's almost like something they must tick off their bucket list. I've got with me here Bernie, and uh, how come you're here? Well, I think you nailed it, actually. I've been across here and spectated a few times in the past, and I've also come here to help service a couple of other Aussies that have been here in the past, and I thought, well, it's probably my turn, so, yeah, I'm here this year having a go at it. Now, the car you've got here, Bernie, is an Isuzu Gemini. It's actually a New Zealand car. That's correct, yeah, yeah. It uh, was originally Malcolm Budd's car, and um, last year a mate of mine, Peter Light, um, done a deal with Malcolm to run the car, 
and then uh, Peter's kindly offered me the opportunity to have a go in the car as well, so here I am. It's been a classic day at the Classic Rally of Otago. Just one more gravel stage this afternoon before they head into the all-important Super Special stage. Spencer, you've had a hell of a day really. You were quite firmly within the top 10. We get to the end of the day and uh, what's the problem now? Yeah, we noticed some noises in the diff on the transport stage back this afternoon, so after some exploratory service, um, we've found some teeth missing off the ground wheel, so uh, it's early drinks for us. Oh, the roads are fantastic. Drivers' roads, like there was no let up, there was no rest. Um, it was fantastic, the roads are awesome. Alistair, you've rallied all around the world and here you are in Otago on day two. How do you rate Otago Rally? Yeah, Otago Rally, I've done it before. Uh, it's probably one of the best rallies around, especially with the roads. Uh, a bit drier this year than you would normally expect down here, but you know, really enjoying it, great roads and, and good fun. The car's gone really well. Uh, it's obviously it's a, it's a full Group 4 spec uh, Escort as they run back in the late 70s, 80s. Uh, BDG engine, uh, Atlas Axle. Pro Flex suspension on it, but non-adjustable, they're classic stuff. Uh, and, you know, really good car, great fun to drive. Today's roads are quite different to yesterday. Yeah, for sure. They said more, more on the Shire side and, and very fast and flowing. Some of them really, really quick and a lot over crest, turning over crest. Probably a little bit Finland, like Finland places, so difficult to make notes for and, uh, and obviously you've got to be committed on, on new roads. Brian, you had a bit of an off in stage six yesterday. Tell us what happened. Oh, it was a bit of a shame, really. We um, we probably got the wrong pace note, I think. I, I um, didn't quite get it right in the recce, so I was doing what I was told to do, but uh, what I was told to do was wrong. So, um, yeah, a uh, bit of a spill. You weren't able to finish the day, but you got the car back here for day two. Uh, it doesn't look like it was too badly damaged. No, we were, we were pretty lucky, really. It was a, big, uh, a bit of a crash, you know, so got away with it. <laughs> We had a few problems getting through the uh, few, last few stages. The uh, steering column collapsed and we had the steering wheel that was doing this. Um, and then we blew the gearbox in the last stage. Um, so we put a, a road car gearbox in it. Uh, no limited slip diff. It's good for about 180 mile an hour on top. So it's uh, it's going to be, um, I don't know, it'll slow us down or speed us up. We'll see. It's going to be great. You've previously been seeded number one in the Otago Rally many years ago. What year was that? Yeah, I I think that was 1976, which um, says a lot really, I shouldn't be here. Oh you should and we love having you as part of the rally. Um, so back in those days you were a regular campaigner in the national championship, what sort of car? Um, RX3s, um, I, had, um, I competed in the um, 76 International in an RX3 and uh, we were fortunate enough to get 8th overall, so I was pretty happy with that. This is your first rally in the Ford Escort. You've purchased it from Andy. Um, it's previously got third in this event. There's many of them in the field. There's obviously a reason why everybody chooses them. Yeah, um, I'm finding it a challenge, actually. I'm, I'm noticing it so much heavier, and it doesn't react as quickly in corners. I mean, it's a tech, it's sort of a technical thing, and it's also my, my ability to adapt to it, and I'm actually not... Not as happy with it as I'd hoped I would, but um, it's not the car's fault. This car's got third in this event, and um, so I'll blame me at this stage. Well, Marcus, the sticker says it all, eh? The Group B days. What's so special about this car? Um, well, we built it up as a new shell, basically just to, well, that Mazda used to run back in the you know, early 80s, um, and it's as good as we get to what they were. So, yeah, it's just got the body kit from the Group B era, and it's run the same sort of engine. A 30B peripheral port, you know, 300 horsepower. 
So it's a full replica of the original Group B Mazdas they used to run? Yes, as good as we could build one in New Zealand, so uh, it's pretty much as close as we can get, and uh, yeah, it's going really well. We had trying moments yes over our brakes, and, uh, but we're up to second now because McCray's had a puncture, so um, yeah, I think uh, we're in a good position you know, for a podium, providing you know, it's a long rally still to go. Great, you've had a good weekend, you're running fifth overall. Lots of you Australians seem to come over and do the Otago Rally. Can you tell us what the attraction is? Oh, it's just the class rally. It's just, look at the, the opposition you've got. The field is fantastic. And the event, the roads, just awesome. And don't forget, I'm a Kiwi too, so... In the car, the BDA Escort, um, you lease that car over here. Tell us about the car. The steam boost car from Palm Soil. Yes, an RS 1800. It's very similar to my car in, in Australia. I, I know Dean pretty well, so he looks after me. It's great. Just really love it. Makes it an easy way to go rallying, I guess. The car can be prepared, you turn up and it's ready to go and you jump in and drive. Oh, definitely it helps doing it here because there's a fair logistic battle to bring it from Australia in container, spares, plus your service crew. So that's, you know, it's a big ask to do that. So I guess you would say the hard part of the rally's over and done with now with the long stage. Um, how are you going to play it for the rest of the afternoon? Oh, I think if, if, if you say I'm coming fifth, I'm happy. More, if I thought I could ever finish in the top ten, I'd be wrapped. So I'm just happy. Just, yeah, it's fantastic. So it'll be, take it easy, I think. Well, Hayden, setting some impressive times this morning. And um, you're actually now just one second off the overall lead of the Otago Rally. No, we, you know, we're just doing the same things as what we were yesterday, just driving our own rally and, and enjoying it. And probably, if anything, just trying to drive it a bit straighter and a bit smoother today. I think that's probably the, the best way to get the fastest time. So. It's good, but obviously a long way to go. The long forest stage will, uh, will be a bit of a sting in the tail, so we need to keep a clean pair of heels. I see the service crew here working on the car. It's a lot of work, you know, keeping these older cars going, isn't it? Yeah, well, they are a bit more basic, I guess. There's not too much to them, but uh, they obviously do need a bit of maintenance and keep an eye on things. So, you know, the guys have been doing an amazing job the last couple of days, and, you know, these are the guys that are always with me working, best mates, and, uh, you know, they put a lot of passion into it. Can you tell us about these WRC cars and the difference? Oh, it's, it's a different kettle of fish, like uh, there's absolutely no comparison to this sort of car. But you know, the Hyundai is just an amazing car to drive and to be part of a factory team is a, a dream come true. And you know, when you're in those cars, they do absolutely everything you want as a driver. Uh, the team's working tirelessly uh, to be able to be winning. So um, to be in that environment is great, but obviously there's a, a lot of pressure to perform as well. John Kennard, what a ride you're having. Yeah, it is. It's pretty special. It's, our, it's the beginning of our 10th year together, so I think he's out there trying to perform just for that. <laughs> but sitting in this escort must be quite different to what you do every day. Yeah, it's vastly different than, than the World Rally Car. Um, I thought it was going to be more different. In the past, when you come back to New Zealand after you've been somewhere and you're really tight, twisty stages, you come back here and you physically have to stop yourself from reading the next note like that. But now we're going quick enough that you do have to read notes fairly quickly as well. Is he scaring you at all? No, it's all pretty good. It was under, under control most of the time. There's odd times where we have missed gears and things and end up sort of sledging into corners in neutral. And, but other than that, it's good. While not competing in the classic division, there was another team here with WRC experience. Kim Block, what brings you to the Otago Rally? Uh, well, I first did this rally back in 2007. Uh, it was only my third year racing and I had a deal to come down here and uh, race part of the championship. And I knew how amazing these roads looked on camera, so I wanted to come down and visit them myself. So I did four events that year uh, and it was a really big learning experience. But uh, I enjoyed this event when I'd come down here, but I ended up crashing out before the end. So I wanted to come back and try and finish it. Well, tell us about the car. Uh, yeah, well, this was uh, the first car that we built uh, with M Sport to race Gymkhana Rallycross and Stage Rally. Uh, and it's built as far as Stage Rally to fit into the US uh, regulations, which is a two liter turbocharged engine. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a WRC car that they build uh, from M Sport, but we adjusted it to do all these other different things. So it's worked quite well as, uh, you know, a Gymkhana car, it did Gymkhana 4, it, it, it's done a bunch of Gymkhana demos around the world, uh, raced Rallycross for one season, and now we just use it mainly to do uh, stage rallies wherever we can around the world. Have we delivered with the roads at Otago Rally this year? Uh, yeah, definitely. I, I, there's a couple rougher roads in here that aren't really my preference, but a couple of the roads are some of the best in the world, uh, including the Gorge Road that we did this morning. It's one of my favorite roads anywhere. So really enjoying it as much as I can possibly can. Ken wasn't on his own enjoying the final stages of the 2015 Otago Classic.
Expat Kiwi Grant Walker came from Melbourne and delivered a top five finish. Local Regan Ross, who regularly features in top three battles, had to settle for fourth on this outing. Marcus Van Klink grabbed third place and importantly maximum points in the National Classic Championship. And in his second attempt, the best the Aussie based Scotsman Alistair McRae could muster was second. But in light of the competition, it's hardly surprising that Kiwi sensation who's reviving New Zealand's interest on the World Rally stage had left his mark. Well this truly has been a classic at the Otago Classic Rally. Not only has Hayden Patton won the rally by some 11 minutes, we've really witnessed something here because he's also won the national round by two and a half seconds. Yeah, it's a bit of a bonus, obviously we never came here to do that, but uh, you know, it's great for Tony and the team for allowing me to drive the car, but um, you know, obviously we had to push a little bit in the last couple of stages, the deficit was getting to a point where it was achievable, but uh, you know, never come here this weekend to push hard, but we had to try a little bit in the last couple and, and it worked out.